I'm here to talk to you today about a LARP that I have not designed, but that I participated in. Uh, it's called Halat Hisar, uh, and it took place in Finland in the fall of 2013. It was organized by a group uh, consisting of both Finns and Palestinians. And the reason for that was that they wanted to mirror the situation in Palestine, in Finland. So uh, on this picture you can see the separation barrier, the wall that you have in Israel, between Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories, but put up in front of a very famous landmark in Helsinki. The big six is that it's alternate history. They've taken the history of Palestine and Israel and put it into Finland. They've made up a fictive um, oppressor called Euralia, who are oppressing the Finnish population. And the LARP was about everyday life under the occupation. So it was supposed to be normal situations, but they used something they called turborealism, which means that everything that happened was realistic, but that everything happened at the same time, maybe not so realistic. So, but that's what they used. Here we can see a scene from uh, the start of the LARP. It's a lecture because the story took place at the University of Helsinki. And at the university, there was going to be student elections, uh, but then uh, the UDF, the Euralian Defense Forces, came in and uh, put a curfew on the uh, university so nobody could leave and nobody could come in. This might sound dramatic, but it is part of what happens sometimes in Palestine. Uh, during the LARP, there were uh, raids from, from the um, military. Uh, there was resistance towards this. In addition to the students, there were also foreign activists and students. Uh, we had Palestinian players uh, playing students from the democratic welfare states of North Africa and the Middle East. Uh, and there were also some foreign fighters <coughs> coming from the other Nordic countries to help their Finnish brethren. There were demonstrations, and in the demonstration, one of the candidates for the student election uh, was shot and killed. And then things escalated more. So you had a lot of raids where the UDF came in and took people out for interrogation. And connecting with the safety talk, before the LARP, everybody had gotten to state whether they wanted to be taken out for interrogation or not. So it was an opt-in to do those sort of scenes. <clears throat> it was designed for giving different players different experiences. You had the people playing Finns who got their sort of experience. And then you had the Palestinians coming in playing what they were doing. Uh, and then you had also a group of soldiers uh, and some Palestinian players playing Euralian soldiers. So you got different experiences from that. With regards to the faders, it was uh, organized written characters. It was an organized written world, but it was some sort of co-creation in a workshop before the LARP. But that was mostly to make sure that people were understanding the world they were now playing in. For instance, uh, the, in Finland, it's not okay to be nationalistic. And so they had to practice being nationalistic, <laughs> singing their national anthem, uh, raising the flag, and doing a lot of other things. They also, <clears throat> we also did a lot of scenes that were sort of part of our common history. So even if I were playing out a scene, it wasn't necessary that it happened only to my character, uh, but it was something that we all knew was happening in our society, but that was foreign to us as players. <clears> there <throat> was a LARP with quite a lot of secrecy. Uh, we didn't know who were collaborating with the Aurelians. We didn't know a lot of other things. 
but it also had semi-transparency <coughs> with some meta techniques that would get you into the character's head so that you could choose to give out secrets, but that was up to you. We'll talk more about meta techniques on Saturday with me and TK. Uh, the thing was that since there was a curfew, everything was happening inside the university. Nobody could leave, nobody could come in, but we could communicate with the outside world. Uh, I was playing a Euralian activist. I was playing with a group of foreign activists and we were always documenting things when it was happening. So the demonstrations, we were documenting uh, the raids, we were documenting and giving news out to the world. But we also started getting news into the world. Uh, the organizers decided when they had started the LARP that they would make a media wall because that would be really cool and it was. Uh, so they put up newspaper uh, sites to start with. This one here uh, is a Finnish newspaper on one side and a Euralian on the other. Uh, Jakob, what does the Finnish one say? Student shot at university, curfew was not broken, ambulance was not let uh, into the area in time. Whereas the other one then tells a bit of a different story. Nordic terrorist dies in clash. So it started with like just giving um, us a way to see the differences in coverage from the media. Uh, but then somebody wanted to also communicate with the world. And so suddenly we had, there were Twittering on the, on the wall. Uh, and then blogs started popping up. So people were writing blog posts and taping them to the wall. There were more news items coming in, showing off different things from different parts of the world. Uh, the student that was killed was Finnish Canadian. So the Canadian media was covering the story in a totally different way. Uh, Tunisian media was mostly interested in that one of their foreign exchange students was trapped in this curfew at the university. So it was really mirroring the way media operates uh, for us today. Uh, but playing with the media wall was really good because you could stand there and see uh, what, what people were playing. And it was kind of, you didn't really know if it was, are we standing here looking at this wall or am I actually like sitting with my cell phone or computer somewhere? But it didn't really matter. And it made for a lot of great conversations. And you could also communicate outwards. Yeah, and then after the LARP, it was also covered by uh, actual media, because this was a political pro uh, project that had um, the goal of actually spreading more information about the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. So it also ended up in Finnish news. If you want to learn more, you can learn more uh, on this page. It will come on the, on the slides that are on the web page. They have published a book uh, documenting the whole um, thing. Do I have time for questions? One minute. Okay. How long was the game? It was a weekend. So we started with workshops on Friday afternoon and Saturday morning, and then we started playing until uh, Sunday afternoon. Okay, thank you.